Hey, flower friends. And yes, I did get caught fibbing to you. It wasn't intentional, but it happened. And today we are going to seed up. We're going to plant the gomfrina in the burpee seed starting tray. I'm not sure if you can see it at all. I'll point the camera down a little bit in a minute so you can see everything I'm doing. But that's what we are going to try to accomplish today. Okay, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. And if you have used one of these burpee seed starting trays, let me see, get the label up here for you. Yes, I have my microphone clipped out here and I can't zip my jacket, I've put on 10 pounds. Um, this one, I got this one at Tractor Supply. I've seen them, I think I've seen one at Walmart and whatever. And it has the self-watering, and I shared with you before the weed mat, weed, see, watering mat. When I started this, I was showing you the pellets that come compressed, and some were laying sideways and some were upright. And I started to put them all upright, and I thought, oh, well, they'll just fill in and become fluffy. Uh, they didn't. So I have some of the cells where that pellet is still compressed in the bottom because with it out not being able to expand, um, it didn't absorb all the water. So there's some cells that are less than optimum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill them. This is the seed starting mix um, that when I was doing the dollar store container, um, I had to mix up. I'll link that one up here too. Um, anyways, then I'm going to put that in the holes that have the compressed thing down below. And I'm hoping that that will not block water flow. But I'm just going to take a stab at it and see what happens. So I'll take you along on the right. And you know, just a second, let me point the camera down so I can make sure you can see. So can you see this? Yeah, you can, much better, more better. Okay, so let me put my glasses on. I want to put gumfrina. I wanna grow a bunch of gumfrina because I wanna dry it. That's my goal. Sometimes I have these goals and then I don't get to meet them, but that is it. Now these are bigger size seeds. Now someone was asking me about starting seeds in paper towels and or coffee filters. Now, bigger size seeds is what I will do that in if I think it's necessary. And I do that for old seeds. Let me see, can you see this? There you go. So those are a larger size seed. Um, I will do it. Now, how I'm gonna seed them is I better read the instructions to make sure I'm doing this right. Sow seeds eighth to a quarter inch deep, yes, so. Now this came with this little thing. So I'm gonna make a little divot that's maybe a quarter inch. This looks like coconut core. It does not, or some call it coir. Um, it does not look like peat moss. It, look, it acts like coconut coir. Um, so I'm just gonna poke this down in there. See, this one is real low. Can you see, oh, you probably can't. But it's like maybe halfway that the coconut coir has expanded into. So that was one of the pellets, compressed pellets that was on its side. Um, yeah, so I should go ahead and fill up those with this and call it good. That way when I'm seeding, I'm just seeding all of them. And this is a mixture, I'm assuming, because it acted like it, this is a, a mixture of peat moss and potting soil. The potting soil that I had um, microwaved to kill any fungus gnats in it to make sure that it was um, not full of fungus gnats. Sterilized, which I don't know if it's really sterilized because I don't know if it was hot enough, but pasteurized at least. I, so. Cleaned of all those thingamajiggers. Now I probably should take this apart. 
because, and what I mean by take it apart, is pull the bottom off. I don't know. I don't think I'll do that to start with. Because I already have the seeds in my hand. Now I'm just going to, with my little pinky, I'm going to pop up one of these seeds. Sometimes I'll get two. Some people say to use a toothpick. Um, I find it hard to get it to let go of the toothpick because you moisten it. And... But other people find it very successful. That fell off my fingernail, fell right there. Thankfully, these are white colored. And um, so that they're easy to see against the core. And this is, oh, that was a couple of seeds. I get lazy. Let me see of my fingertips maybe. Yeah, so far so good. Now, um, getting a little crazy there. I could always divide these out if I get too many in a cell, but I'm just going to try to pull them up because I don't want to bore you to death doing this. So maybe I'll speed this up so you don't have to Watch me do all of these. Okay, that's all of them. And uh, most of them I put two in. Some of them only have one, but that's all good. So let's see. Oh, it says pre soak seeds for 24 hours. I have just sewn them directly and this is very moist so I'm not going to worry about it. Maybe I'll take those in and pre-soak them. I don't know why that didn't stick out in my brain. Okay so now this is a little trowel and I'll link to it in my description box and it's made in Holland by DeWin. Anyways I just press them down into the soil so they have good contact. I'm calling it soil but it's definitely coconut coir. And I know um, a lot of people may not know this, but they, it is sold as a better alternative than peat moss. But if you actually look up the en environmental impact of the using coconut coir, because basically it's brought over from foreign countries. So you've got the shipping and the... Um, what do they call the carbon footprint of that? And then because they're taking it and processing it, uses a lot of water for processing. Now I'm gonna go and cover these. And then also before the farmers used the coir itself, they just left it on the ground and it acted as a mulch. So now, and fertilizer, so it's, it, it treated the soil. And now, so they're having to buy fertilizer because the coir is being sold as this medium for us in place of the peat moss. So um, I wouldn't say there's much benefit to swapping it out. So normally I don't buy it. I used to, I used to add it to my um, soil mix that I would make my DIY soil. And now I just use the potting soil. Some of it already has the peat moss in it. Um, it's very hard here to find potting soils that do not have the peat moss, but it, they're getting there. Now, when I make my own, now instead of the coir or anything, I just use the uh, compost that I get, the distal turkey compost, which is an organic com uh, turkey farm. And um, I'll use perlite, I'll use rice hulls, though I've been trying to find out if the rice hulls have any kind of residual, maybe pesticides or herbicides in them, I don't know. I don't know the, what they use. The, the rice farms here in California, the ones that I know about, they're organic. Um, so it's all, it's a trade-off. You never know what you're having to trade off. You can do your best. Okay, there's a seed there that got away. All right, making sure they're all covered. All the seeds are covered, especially as it said quarter inch, eighth to a quarter of an inch. 
So you don't want them sitting on top, though. You never know. Sometimes things will sit on top and germinate. Now, out in the garden, when things that reseed themselves, it's the rain and the snow and stuff that drives the seeds down into the soil. Okay, so there's that. Those are all in there. Now, this is the... Did I use this one? No, I didn't. I picked up my other one, right? No. Did I do the wrong one? Oh, fooey. I'm not paying attention. This is the one I wanted to sow. That's okay. We'll go with the mix and be good with it. I can sow the other. In fact, I'll soak them. Does this one say to soak too? Okay, pre-soak seeds. So I'll go ahead and I'll pre-soak these and then maybe I'll use them over in the other little starter tray or my other, or my, um, I like these. These ones have the silicone base. These are also burpee, pop out and reusable. I have some I used last year, the year before. Let me show you what they look like. They scrub up real easy. I have a scrub brush that I get from the dollar store. It's get silicone. So when it's time to pop, them out and plant them up. They uh, are, it's super easy to do. And you see these big old holes? So that air prunes the, the plants. And um, I've had great success with those. And the tray that they sit in is super sturdy. So I'll be able to use these for years. So I really like them. Whenever the, I had picked up a year, I picked up two. Last year I picked up another one, and then this year I picked up another one. So, I, I like this one was um, eight dollars, I think, eight to ten dollars. I think the first one I bought was eight. I think this one was ten. But since I'm going to be reusing it for who knows how long, um, it was worth it to me. And then I'm not buying things that you throw away. They reuse, reuse the pots like this. Let me get some. Some of these pots that I've got years and years ago, I've used them for 10 years. So they're not going in the landfill. Um, I scrub them up and use them over and over. So we're all good. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of here. There's two different ones. It's got water in it, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I want to put in the little holders, and I mean holders, the little thing that holds the top, these things up. Whoops, just poured that out. All right, we'll put that down there. We will dust this off because I don't want the bottom of this to get super dirty because I'm gonna be putting it in the house on the light tray. Light tray, light rack. Let me get this, set this down. Okay. And these go in here. And then here's the mat. I'm sure it's the white side up because it feels like it's the um, material. The other feels like it's a plastic membrane. And then these will go on top of it and it will absorb the water. Okay, I got that a little bit wet there from that. So this is the gum freedom mix. It's very moist. So I'm not going to water it, even though it's supposed to, the so seeds are supposed to be soaked. I've planted gumfrina before. I don't ever remember soaking the seeds, so maybe that's just a, something they add. Okay. Alrighty. So there we go. We are going to put this on the light rack up in the house, in my office, and um, We'll wait and see. Let's see what it says as far as how long it takes them to germinate. Um, seed depth, hardy, sprouts in five to 14 days. So that is good to know. And that's probably with the pre-soaking. So with, since I didn't pre-soak, I'll expect it to be the longer end of that spectrum, like the 24. Five to 24 days? 
me try that again. 14. 14 days. Okay. I'm going to dry this off because I got this wet. And we'll call that good. So there we have whoo, Spider, Mr. Spider. Go down, Spider. Get off my rag. I'm starting to get those wolf spiders in here. And no, I'm not necessarily afraid of spiders, um, but I have been bitten by those rascals getting on my collar and right in the face. And it swells up and doesn't look pretty. So, yeah, we just throw them on the ground and let them find another place to go. Alrighty, so we seeded up the gumfrina in that, and I showed how I topped up the cells that I didn't properly turn the little pellets upright in. We'll see how that works. So we will get plenty of gumfrina for next summer. We will dry it at the end of summer. I hopefully will do that. It's really easy. I've done it in years past. And if you just had watched my video on my garden center foray shopping trip, and I was showing you the lilies I got. Look at this. Isn't that just the most gorgeous thing? Now this one is pollen free and in there, and I wanted to mention it again because many people have said that they did not know this. And so it's good to know, per uh, what do they call this, a public service announcement. Um, lilies, Asiatic and Oriental, and I'm not sure if the calla lilies, see my gorgeous calla lilies, aren't they beautiful? Um, I don't see any pollen pods on them, but I know the Asiatic and the Oriental lilies, the pollen that you get on the stamens that come out in there, or got this long end, um, and they're very powdery. The pollen will stain clothing. You will not be able to get that stain out. But more importantly is if your cats brush by them or get any of the pollen on their fur and then they lick their fur, they will die. They, it causes, uh, I think, kidney failure. So it's highly toxic to cats. So you, if you do grow um, lilies, like I do, mine grow really tall. So the cat, is, it's much taller than the cat. There are lilies that are shorter. They're called border lilies. Those, even though I love them and lilies do well for me, I have cats. And that's about the height they would go by. So I won't um, buy those and plant them in my garden because of that. So just a word to the wise, be aware of that they are highly toxic to cats. Okay, I got some more stuff back there. That went over there. Alrighty then, so we got this to take into the house. And I don't know why I'm not fitting that on there properly. I'm doing something terribly wrong. But I'll take care of it in the house. I don't know what my chickens are making a ruckus about, but can you see this tray? Oh yes, this tray I bought at True Value Market, and these are just seed starting trays. They have holes in the bottom. I did not come with a bottom tray, but what I am going to sow today is microgreens. And hopefully they don't need to be pre-soaked either. <laughs> so, If so, I will skip that and do something else. I do have to get these, I wanna put these into pots, but I think I'm gonna need more potting soil, so I will put that aside for a few days. On my trip too, I bought a beautiful rose, Power, Power Puff Pink. It is just gorgeous. Um, yeah, let me see. I just had those micro greens in my hand. Aha. Now this one is called Mellow Blend. Now let me read. When to sow outside, no, when to start inside. Recommend it. Sow indoors any time of year. For a continual crop, sow every seven to 14 days. Use a shallow container with one to two inches of fine seed starting mix. I don't use seed starting mix. Um, sow seeds in a single layer and cover with eight inch and a quarter inch of mix. So what is this? Has mustard, broccoli, kohlrabi, bok choy, cabbage in it. So this ought to be interesting. Now when you, you can harvest these like every, when they just start coming up, and um, yeah, that should be fine. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to seed it. Yes, there are bigger bits. This is not fine, but we'll test it and see. When they're tall enough, you're just gonna cut them off. So 
you know, I'm not worried about any seeds or soil getting in them. The problem with seed starting mix is that the problem with seed starting mix is many of them that I have available to me are um, the peat moss. So, you know, they number one, they don't hold water well. They have no nutrients in them. But I know what the thing is. I mean, they'll say easily you can get fungi and damping off and all those kind of things. Well, hopefully we'll avoid that. But instead of soil on top, I am going to, I'm seeding these pretty thickly because I'm just going to cut them off and eat them. Um, so it's okay if I seed them thickly. There's specialty kits you can buy that have like a mat you can grow these on and all kinds of things. But you know me, I'm not fancy. So I'm going to grab my vermiculite, and I'm just going to put that on top. So I'm first going to firm these in so there's good contact with the soil. And I see patches where the seeds are thicker than others. That's okay. I'm not, gonna, I'm not fancy about this. So I want to make sure these are all the same level. So check it out. I see some other areas that need to be a little bit thicker with seeds or a mist. Okay. I'm sure I'm doing this all wrong, but we'll see how it works. Okay. It's funny how they put instructions on the inside. Like, you're supposed to be able to read that. I don't know. Okay. General microgreens. Microgreens is a term for individual varieties, container, shallow, flat, or broad, soil, fertile, fine, seed starting mix. Oh, okay. I can't even read in there anymore. So I'm just going to top it up rather than with soil. I'm going to top it up with vermiculite. And I'm just going to make it thick enough that they're covered like they're supposed to be. And we're going to be good with that. I need to get some more vermiculite. I usually use it very sparingly because vermiculite is on the pricier side compared to perlite, but it does hold the retain the moisture. And I think we'll do the job. I think we'll do the job just fine and dandy. And then I will set this in a tray. So um, I don't have a tray cleaned up yet, so these trays from uh, Bootstrap Farmer are perfect. I'll take this in, I'll scrub it up, make sure it's sanitized, sterilized, whatever you want to call it, and um, we'll put this in here on the light rack. Now I have more trays, which I could sew more, but I don't want to get too much at once because you really have to use them in a, in a few days. Um, and so like in seven days, I will start another one and plop it in here and we will call it good. I have some more soil over here for more seed starting that I just sanitized in my microwave, the same as I did before. Okay, what else am I gonna sew? Alrighty, milkweed. This is a California native milkweed, or at least it said it was in here. And it is um, hardy, it's perennial down to zone six. Now with milkweed, there's this, I can't remember what it was, a fungus or something that can harm the butterflies. But if you just cut them back, don't let them overwinter, cut them back and the, they'll grow back from the root and they'll be safe. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay, so this is not fussy about soil. It can go in drought areas, it can go in moist areas. So I like that. So days to emerge, 14 to 28. When to sow outside, two to four weeks before your average last frost date. So that means this would be a good candidate for uh, winter sowing. But, here's the but. The last year, I had some come back. That was not one that was supposed to be hardy here. Um, it had reseeded itself, but it took so long it took so long for it to get going that it never got to flower. We did have a cool summer last year, but I want to get a head start. 
the ones that I had the most success with were the ones I bought as plants. So these will, first of all, I will seed these. I will leave them outside for a week. Well, maybe they'll get that cold spell they need. Then I will take them inside on my light rack and get them started. So, now supposedly milkweed does not like to be moved. So, I think it's a good candidate for this. There's plenty of cells. I'm gonna plant every single one. I am going to have butterflies this year. The one year that I had two plants, <coughs> excuse me, um, it was just so much fun because I had butterflies hatch. Now, I will tell you, and I mentioned this in a prior video, that um, I had ants that were eating the caterpillars, and I didn't know it. But I did notice all of a sudden one day they had these most beautiful caterpillars. They weren't big enough to turn into chrysalises yet. But the next day I went out to check on them, because I was checking on them every day. They were gone, completely gone. And I was like, what happened? And I had, went and looked, I saw ants going up and down the stem. And sure enough, when I went and looked it up, ants will eat the caterpillars of butterflies. And that's what was happening. All right, this soil is still a little bit warm, still a little hot. So I'm gonna have to wait to do this. And, all right, my battery died, sorry about that. And I forgot my true confessions. If you watched my video uh, going to the garden center at Green Acres, I had, had said before, a couple weeks ago, I wasn't gonna buy any seeds, and you see me picking up some seeds. Yes, I'm sorry. I failed my no seed buying test, but there was some things I wanted to start, like milkweed, which is what I'm gonna do now, and I was sharing with you. Also, um, what else did I buy? Oh yes, I had some, spy, um, the Cleomi, and I winter sowed it, but I wanted to do some inside. And um, I had used up my seeds, I think. So I just knew I wanted more. I wanna do a whole bunch. I'm trying to just really mass plant things that I just love and do well for me here. So yeah, so I, just three, just these three packets. And I had um, picked up some tomatoes before that I wanted that I didn't have. So that's another thing, but this this is Violet Queen Salvia. Now salvias, they are great companion plants for roses. This one is supposed to be a little bit shorter growing. The one, the Victory, one I grew last year did beautiful. Um, let me see, let me make sure I'm, oh, make sure I'm correct in that this is a shorter growing one. I looked it up. It is also hardy down to my zone. So I'm not seeing it. Why am I not seeing it? I thought for sure when I had looked it up, probably when I had read it, oh, 24 inches tall. So this is supposed to stay shorter. And that's why I wanted it. Plus they are like a bee magnet. The most beautiful blue flower. So here we are. I had to come back after my battery died on me. So yeah, this is cooled off enough to plant the milkweed. So this needs to be moved out of my way. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. Maybe I can set it over here. Now, one thing about this tray is it's not quite as sturdy as my Bootstraps Farmer ones, but it is still pretty sturdy. All right, we will take that in the house when I go in after I do this. So this will go in here, but I don't want it to get messy, all the dirt at the bottom of that. So I'm gonna set it on my pan. It's an old sheet pan, so I can fill this up safely. This is just my potting soil again, and we will get the milkweed planted. I will leave it out here for a week or two in the cold. We got snow again last night, just a little bit, so it got cold enough. Um, I haven't looked at the weather for the next week, you never know what it's gonna do. It can tell you it's gonna rain and then it snows. It's gonna tell you it's gonna snow and then it just rains. We had thunder and lightning last night. This morning I had to go up to a local coffee shop because our internet was down to turn on our Starlink. We do have it, my husband insisted on that to have as a backup, but we couldn't uh, turn it back on here. I had to go up to where there was a different internet provider 
than the one we normally use, who does not seem to go out when there's a power outage. We didn't lose our power, but wherever the backup for that one is, I was just double checking. So I'm firming this down. The butt end of this little trowel is just so handy for this. So I'm getting it squished down in there so it's firm, but not totally packed tight. Um, the, the potting soil that I like to use is the Edna's Best by E.B. Stone. It's what's available here on the West Coast um, and around me locally, so that's why I use it. Um, I'm sure there's other really good brands that will work well. So let me read this. Um, start six to eight weeks, special germination instruction, light aids, press seeds into soil. Now it says nothing about cold stratification, though it is often said that milkweed needs it. So I don't know what to think, if I need to do it or not with this. You think they would tell you. They usually give you really good instructions. Now this is botanical interest. This is narrow leaf milkweed. And um, so peel back flaps for more info on the inside. Okay, let's see how many seeds I got in here first. Whoops, one fell down. Okay, now somebody says you need to put them in on their side. I'm not gonna bother. You know what, I'm sure they would tell me if they needed to. So I'm just setting one on top of each cell A lot of times people will have you do two or more and then you cut off the weaker one once they germinate. Um, but I'm just such a sucker for plants. I can't seem to bring myself to cut off a perfectly healthy plant. So I usually separate them. That seed didn't look that great. So I am going to put two in that one. And um, even plants, they say you can't separate. I do. But if you don't have to, you don't have to. So we'll do one in each cell. One, one, one. Okay, I have a few seeds left. That if I have a big fat fail, but the only thing is I can't get inside to read this. Your average last day of frost. Botanic name history. Provide water. I'm sure there's more information somewhere else. Oh, how deep are you supposed to plant them? Uh, see, press into surface so you don't. I'm going to press them in. Whoops, that one's stuck. So press them down. I will then go ahead and sprinkle a little vermiculite on top that holds moisture. It won't block enough light to stop it from germinating, but it will give it a little bit of cover. Um, what do I do with my little thing I was using to sew with? Oh dear. Oh, there it is, right there. So, yeah, someone had asked me that, if the vermiculite blocks the light when you put it on top of ones that need light to germinate, and no, it doesn't seem to. It seems maybe that somehow the light gets through, but then it's just, I barely have a dusting of it on top. Now this time I'll put that in there so I don't lose it. So there we have that. Now this does not have um, a lid, a clear lid to hold the moisture in. So I have a couple options. Sometimes I just put a plastic wrap on top. I put like, um, I usually have the bamboo skewers that I set on top so it doesn't squish down onto the soil. You can do that. But also I just have a squirt bottle that I just squirt the top of the soil with to keep it moist. And the vermiculite holds moisture. So that's a nice nifty trick with that one. So. I usually water from the bottom with my seedlings and we are good to go with our milkweed for our butterflies this year. I can set this back down here. So my friends, that is my video for today. Nothing too heavy duty. I am still going to do a question and answer video. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below and I will try to get to as many as I can. Now, so that is our seeding of our milkweed. This is the, <clears throat> excuse me, narrow leaf milkweed. And we'll come back and we'll do the salvia or I'll do the salvia. We'll talk about salvias a bit. They're just, you know, there's a thousand different types of salvia or species in the species in the family. 
I did take cuttings um, last fall and I stuck them in here and look these are the mystic spires I do believe and uh, they're coming along oh yeah wait one second I've still been doing my painting lessons I've been trying to do one a day or at least get started on one so it might take me two days to finish it because I'm taking my time but I want to share my latest ones with you so let me grab them So now, don't laugh. I, I'm struggling with this method, but I am learning a lot. So it's helping me loosen up and it's totally new to me. But um, yeah, here's the sunflower. They're better from far away. <laughs> and then the tulip. This one was super hard. I thought it would be easier than it was. And let me tell you, that was a tough one. And it's still, it's not, it's not to my liking. Um, there's things that stand out to me that I, 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 would, I would change if I did it again. Um, but I'm determined to stick with what she says to do and just follow her along, learn her method. And then later on, I will morph it into my style and or combine it with what I know of other things. And then I'll develop my own style with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have plenty more seed starting I did from last year. If you want to go back and watch that, I think I have a playlist, which I will link. Yes, I will link right here somewhere, um, the playlist of all my seed starting videos that I can think of. Some of them are older and they're a little rough around the edges, but you may pick something up that I have failed to educate you on this year so far. And we're only in February. This is towards the end of February. It's it's between sun and, and clouds today, but it's so much fun. And I will be potting up these snapdragons. Oh, I got a ton of snapdragons I need to get out too, get seeded. So that's something that they like it cooler. So I need to get those done. So much going on. I doubt I will get to it all, but I hope you enjoyed this video and come on back for more garden goodness. We're going to be doing something around here. So. I'll see you later. Bye.